Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. A 22-year-old Westland man accused of murdering his own mother appears in court. The charges he's facing and when he's expected back in front of the judge. Driving while on drugs, police in one county are now using a new tool to crack down on this dangerous problem. And as we take a live look at the downtown Detroit skyline from our Windsor cam, low hanging clouds and could we see snow this weekend? I have the person that has all of the answers sitting right next to me. Uh, welcome to Friday here on Local 4 News at noon. Thank you so much for waking up with us as we gear up for waking up with us. I'm, I'm in my, my morning greeting. It's noon. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for being with us this noon. We do have Paul Gross in for Brandon just to give us an idea particularly for folks that are getting out on the road for the holiday. Things right now are, have, have actually improved. So people that are heading out the door right now, you're doing well. In fact, if you're heading up north, heading to the west. We're in pretty good shape. Now all day we've been focusing on temperatures because of the potential for a little glazing. So let's start with four zone weather here. Uh, City Airport in Detroit is at 34 degrees. Dearborn, you're also at 34. Hey, look, Taylor just jumped up to 37, but 35 at Livonia and we have 35 at Gross Seal, but West Bloomfield still at freezing at 32. Sterling Heights at 33. In our south zone, Everybody above freezing, Dundee's at 35. Same thing at Adrian, Blissfield over to Celine, uh, you're at 34 degrees. West zone, 35 in Ann Arbor, but 33 at Milford, even freezing, Brighton at 32. And as we head to the north zone, we're at or below freezing still. 31 at Emmett, 32 at KPAC, Lapeer's at 32, Sandusky at 31, Melvin checking in at 32 degrees. So now that you know the temperatures, let's look at the moisture. Where is it? There isn't a whole lot. The snow, there was a nice stripe of snow this morning here. That has moved out. And we're still watching for any little sprinkle or light shower coming out of Indiana. But as you can see, there's not a whole lot down there. So as we move through the afternoon, let me just show you with the computer model here. Uh, we're a lot of clouds and at any point you can get a, a brief snowflake or you can get a sprinkle or a, a, maybe a brief light shower. But as you can see, there's nothing terribly uh, impactful here. And we just uh, basically for your evening plans, we're going to be just dry. And by the way, coming up in about 10, 15 minutes, we're going to take this model all the way into Monday and broaden the view to show you travel weather and our Christmas Eve snow. But for this afternoon, just lots of clouds, maybe a sprinkle or a flake with temperatures kind of holding steady in the mid 30s again be back with that holiday forecast in just a little bit Rhonda all right thank you Paul topping our news this noon a 22 year old Westland man has been formally charged with killing his own mother Justin Paul was in court this morning after his mother Jeanette Paul was found stabbed to death on Wednesday as Nick Monticelli reports from Westland why she was killed still remains a mystery Good afternoon. The arraignment of Justin J. Paul happened in this courthouse at about 9 o'clock this morning, charged with first degree premeditated murder. It only lasted a few minutes, but just a few miles down the road, the 22 year old's father is just trying to figure out what happened. And calling the matter of Justin J. Paul. The 22 year old Justin Paul walked into this Westland courtroom to face a judge for the first time since allegedly killing his own mother. He is charged with first degree premeditated murder and acknowledged the victim, Jeanette Paul, Jeanette is his Paul. mom. That is your mother, correct? Yes. And the court stated this is a, an offense punishable by life without parole. It's been a heinous crime that you allegedly committed with your own mother. Westland police were called to this home Wednesday morning on Walton. There, 50 year old Jeanette Paul had been stabbed and killed. Investigators immediately thought Justin Paul was the killer and began searching for him, but somehow he ended up in Livonia. When officers in that city spotted Paul, there was some type of altercation. It ended with officers shooting Paul in the leg. I, I finally fell asleep for a few minutes. Today in Westland, Jeanette's husband and Justin's father, Vern, is emotionally distraught. He says his son has ADD and has been diagnosed with bipolar disorder, but he says there were no problems between Justin and his mother. Just a snap thing. Like everything was good. We were going shopping, so it, you know, I'm mad for what he did. Yeah. But I also want to talk to him, and I, I need to know what what happened. Why? The next time Paul will be in this courthouse is going to be just after the new year for a probable cause conference. That's to determine what kind of evidence there is in this case. In Westland, Nick Monticelli, Local 4.
All right, Nick, thank you. In the arraignment, Westland police said that Paul had a knife in his pants pocket when he was arrested. It's still unknown if that was the knife that was the murder weapon. Washtenaw County has become the first county in Southeast Michigan to run a pilot program that will begin testing drivers at traffic stops that they believe are under the influence of drugs. There are several officers that are drug recognition experts who will begin patrolling the streets in Washtenaw County. Now, when they ask if a driver is on drugs, they have a machine to confirm the answer. All that's needed is a quick mouth swab, and in minutes, the machine can tell if the driver has taken any drugs recently. Because everybody's all concerned, well, say this was marijuana I smoked a couple days ago. That's not going to show up. Now, drivers may legally refuse to undergo the drug testing. However, much like refusing to take a breathalyzer test for alcohol, you could face a ticket. Two Detroit police officers have been released from custody after their bond was lowered in connection to separate police brutality cases. Officer Lonnie Wade faces assault and misconduct charges in connection to that rough arrest at a Meyer store back in October, while Officer Richard Billingsley is charged with assault for allegedly beating a drunk man at a gas station. Now, former state trooper Mark Bessner does still remain behind bars. He's being held on a $1 million bond and facing murder charges in connection to the death of Damon Grimes. We have new information, pretty shocking too, on the shooting that happened at a bar seven, the bar seven right there in Southfield this past Saturday. Andre Deshaun Robinson has been charged with assault with intent to murder when he opened fire inside of this bar. But the person that he allegedly was targeting in that bar was his barber. Why? Sources say that the barber is in high demand and hadn't returned Robinson's phone calls about a haircut that day. The barber was waiting for his friends at the bar when Robinson showed up and started shooting at him. The brain of the gunman behind the Las Vegas massacre is going to be sent to a lab for further investigation. Stephen Paddock's initial autopsy didn't show any abnormalities. However, police are still investigating why. Why Paddock shot at the crowd and so far haven't found any reasons. We've also learned that Paddock shot himself in the mouth before police stormed his hotel room above the Las Vegas Strip. An Associated Press investigation found Russian hackers targeted American journalists with as much intensity as U.S. politicians and intelligence figures. The espionage group known as Fancy Bear tried to break into Gmail inboxes of at least 200 reporters, publishers, and bloggers. They started around mid-2014, and evidence shows that they tried hacking as recently as a few months ago. U.S. intelligence believes that the group acted on behalf of the Russian government. Hall of Famer and Michigan native Dick Enberg has passed away. Enberg was a 13 time Sports Emmy Award winner known for his mantra, oh my, and the American Sportscasters Association ranks him in the top 10 sportscasters of all time. He started his 60 year career at Central Michigan University right here in Mount Pleasant, and then he went on to work for NBC Sports, CBS, and ESPN before ending his legendary career as the primary play-by-play -play television voice of the San Diego Padres in 2016. He was 82 years old. New at noon, the government lives to serve another day. President Trump making his major legislative victory, signing the GOP tax bill into law. What this means for Michigan taxpayers. Plus, new information on that home explosion in Arizona and what's being done for this displaced family. And the world is waiting, waiting on the live and final launch of the year. How you can watch the entire liftoff of SpaceX's Falcon 9. We're back in a moment. It's back. Welcome back, everybody. This just in. President Trump has just signed the Republican tax bill overhaul, as well as a temporary spending bill that keeps the government running through mid-January. The $1.5 trillion tax bill is expected to trigger tax cuts for most Americans starting next year. Funding has also been extended for, for CHIP the Children's uh, health insurance program through the end of March. The president will now head to Palm Beach, Florida to spend the holidays at his Mar-a-Lago resort. Governor Snyder warns the federal tax bill will increase our state income taxes. The state legislation, which President Donald Trump just signed, will eliminate $4,500 in personal exemptions. Snyder, he says that 
that is an issue because Michigan lets people claim a $4,000 exemption for each exemption taken on the federal return. Governor Snyder says that the state should not benefit from the tax revenue and should figure out a way to give that money back to the people. One person is dead and another critically injured after a natural gas explosion that happened in Phoenix, Arizona Thursday morning. When firefighters arrived on the scene, the entire home was destroyed and flames were quickly spreading to neighboring homes. Crews battled the blaze for hours. In addition to the house, neighboring homes were badly damaged. Investigators believe a gas leak is to blame. The Red Cross is working to assist this family. Well, the world is awaiting SpaceX's live and final launch of the year. SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket will will lift off to the skies from Vandenberg Air Force Base in California. The launch marks the first time a reused booster will be used and the fifth time a SpaceX reused booster has flown. In the mission today doesn't go well. SpaceX will try again tomorrow and you can watch the launch live on space.com at 8:27 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tonight. Coming up, Christmas Cinema will take a look at all of the blockbusters hitting the big screens for the holiday weekend. Plus, Paul's here with that holiday forecast. Absolutely, Rhonda. There's not a whole lot going on right now, but once we get further into the weekend, there's going to be a lot more going on. It's going to affect maybe some of your holiday travel. So we'll talk about that and we'll talk about the white Christmas possibilities all coming up right after the break. Doing crosswords to build up your brain. Consider hitting the dance floor instead. I just love to do it because it challenges me both mentally and physically. More than crossword puzzles and sudokus and anything that you can do to train your brain. Tonight at 11, Local 4 Dr. Frank McGeorge reveals the surprising benefits of dance. See why it could be a secret weapon against dementia and much more. Right now at... All right, let's get you going here with the weather here at the noon hour. Temperatures have been really slogging along, just creeping upward, maybe a degree or two at the most this morning. 35 right now in Adrian, 32 in Pontiac. That's an even freezing. 35 in Ann Arbor and 35 over at Metro. The wind continues light, so we're not dealing with wind chill. Got a great storm pin in yesterday. This was the sun. They had a peak of sun here in Port Huron at the moment of the winter solstice. So for those of you who don't like winter and you're kind of in the doldrums about that, Here's a piece of good news. This is the lowest point that the sun is going to be in the sky. It's going to start slowly, but getting higher in the sky. And that means our days are now going to start slowly getting longer. We've crossed that point at least. All right, right now on radar, a lot of clouds around. But you notice there's not a whole lot falling from those clouds. This morning, snow has moved out. A couple of little drips, perhaps, coming in out of Indiana. Again, most of us, especially south of 8 Mile, are above freezing. And north of 8 Mile, just, just barely below freezing. So we're not going to rule out a, a brief little patch of freezing drizzle. So you have to watch out for that if you're out and about. But I don't think we have a whole lot of, in the way of trouble this afternoon. The whole map is kind of a hodgepodge. Uh, the snow from this morning is moving off to the east. This moisture is being handled very well by the computer model. This is a brand new model now. I've loaded into the computer for you here at noon. And what we have is a wave of low pressure, the first one coming up. But notice this rapid, dramatic increase in moisture to the south. That's ahead of the second area of low pressure. And if you or anybody you know is traveling in tomorrow from the south or from the east, there is trouble out here. You can see there's snow on the cold side of the system, uh, heavy rain. There are going to be air delays in parts of New England tomorrow. That's going to be a mess. As we head into Saturday night and Sunday, we are dry. Uh, the rain and the snow, that's all moving off in New England. Here comes the cold front. The timing is afternoon. Some light snow breaks out. Once that moves through by early evening, maybe we shut off some of the snow, but the cold Arctic air coming across those lakes, these are very intense lake effect snow squalls, so watch out if you're heading that way. Some of those do break off and move across the state, so that'll be Sunday night, Christmas Eve, into perhaps Monday as well. So again, be a, use a lot of caution if you're heading to the western side of the state. All right, 35 the high this afternoon. Notice temperatures not going up much. You could get a snowflake, a brief patch of drizzle or freezing drizzle. So we're dry tomorrow, as I just showed you, 36 for the high. Sunday, we already talked about afternoon light snow. Uh, only 20s for a high, and then we get into the deep freeze, Rhonda. Monday, all the way through next weekend, we are going to be well below average for temperatures. All right, Paul, thank you. Well, let's talk about the Christmas holiday weekend movies. Hollywood is playing Santa Claus, stuffing movie theaters with all sorts of cinematic gifts. Here's Raphael Seth to run down just a few in this week's box office preview. 
Jumanji. Pick a character and you're that person in the game. Teenagers are so absorbed in their video games in Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle. This new adventure comes more than 20 years after the Robin Williams original. Teens get sucked into an old arcade game, becoming their digital characters, and they've only got three lives to try to get out before it becomes permanent. Jumanji is rated PG-13. I'm five inches tall! Matt Damon is not ready for the big time in downsizing. This comedy is set in a world where people shrink themselves to combat overpopulation. The benefits are huge, but the psychological repercussions can be monumental. Downsizing is rated R. I'm putting together a show. And I need a star. Hugh Jackman's life is a circus in The Greatest Showman. This big top musical is inspired by the life of P.T. Barnum. Jackman plays the originator of the Three Ring Circus in a life devoted to ambition, dreams, and the birth of show business. The Greatest Showman is rated PG. I would do anything to see what you guys get. It's one final encore for the Barden Bellas in Pitch Perfect 3. This one reunites the original lineup in a post-grad sing-along. With college behind them, the ladies must find a different outlet for their musical talents and set their sights on a USO tour. Pitch Perfect 3 is rated PG-13. That's the box office preview. Raphael Seth, Local 4. Oh, one more. Also out this week, Tom Hanks and Meryl Streep in The Post. Still ahead, the one family who decided to give their child's teacher a very unique gift. Why, their gift is a cause for celebration. Welcome back, everybody. If you teach a little, you may drink a little. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what one mom and dad thought, and um, they actually gifted the teacher with something very unique in honor of their son. Yeah, uh, this year, instead of the typical mug or candle, they gave their son's teacher wine as a Christmas <laughs> present with a custom twist. This is down in Dayton, Ohio. The parents replaced the original labels with a photo of their son that reads, our child might be the reason you drink. <laughs> So enjoy this bottle on us. <laughs> the gift makes perfect sense to his older brother, DJ. I know I can't spend six hours in the room with my little brother, and they've been doing that every day for however long he's been in school. <laughs> no word on the teacher's reaction yet, but I'm sure she got a kick out of it. Rumor has it others are already lining up to be his teacher for next year. <laughs> Cute. And we have something special to share with you. Before we go, we want to send you a little Christmas cheer. And here's a little preview of Evrod, our own Evrod Casimir, singing. He has a song um, that he remade, Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas, and it is quite beautiful. This is great. Yes.